submarine landslides seen here on the modern seabed can create chaotic deposits called debrites, where different formations have been mixed together as the seabed slid off downslope. The internal structure of debrites is commonly considered to be chaotic, but as they have relatively rigid class in a supi matrix, deformation can align the clasts through rotational strain. So let's consider two types of deformation. In their contraction, the clasts will tend to align subvertically, while in their extension, the clasts will tend to align horizontally. And these different strains should be manifest in the geometry, the morphology, of the Debrite's top. So can we link strain to the shape of the top of the Debrite? We'll use an example from the Oligocene of Italy, where turbidites of the so-called Macinio Coschieri were deposited in an active basin. And the turbidites contain the products of submarine landslides, Debrites. And we're going to look at this one at the headland of San Leonardo, near the little port of Barati. The debrite is bounded by turbidite sandstones, and the top is hummocky, or rugose. So these are the rocks we've come out here to see. It's this unit here. It's a debrite. If I look really closely in here, I can see that it's got, well, really poor store sorting. It's just a, a mess of grains. And they're also, well, they're clasps of, well, look to be carbonate pelites. So the debrite, this unit, is sandwiched between a sandstone that I'm kneeling on behind me here and this one up here this is the upper sandstone so it's sitting as the filling in a sandstone sandwich so what's the relationship of the structure in the debrite and the deposition and the depositional structures in the sandstone on top well, let's have a scout around and see what we can find So here's the upper sandstone bed in the contact, here's the debrite. And as I come up from you, you can see in here, there's hardly any fabric at all. But as I come up in this direction, there's a slight fabric developed, but notice, well, these shadowy holes. These are eroded out clasps that are aligned like this. You can see them come down like this. So there's some kind of process that's orienting the clasps parallel to this, or more or less parallel, to this contact coming down through here. And now let's look at the orientation of the lamination in the sandstone on top. Well, there's the contact, and the lamination in the sandstone is oblique to it. So there's a contact coming down, and we've got obliquity between the fabric, or the depositional lamination in the sandstones, and its basal contact with the debrite. So let's sketch that up and make an interpretation. So the fabric comes down like this. Goes out across. Let's get the fabric in. In the glass. Coming down. And some of the fabric in the sandstones coming in. It's interesting. As you look across towards the right hand side over there, I can see the lower part of the sandstone, which we'll check in a minute. It's very coarse grey. It even looks quite the regular contact down onto the dead right that's underneath. So we'll look at that as we go.
just to orient the sketch. So there we have it, a simple quick sketch of the outcrops. So let's interpret it. Well, it looks to me like we've got a shear zone that's aligned the clasts in the debrite. And what it's done is it's moved down like this, creating extra space in the top surface of it within which the sandstone can accumulate. So it's rather like maybe like a small half garden, very low angle normal shear zone coming down like that, creating a accommodation space, a little mini basin in its hanging wall within which the sandstone can accumulate. And it's all over by the time it gets to the top of the hill, or the top of the cliff in here, where the sandstone at the top is uh, essentially flat, dipping away from us, parallel to the one that's at the bottom of the debrite. So deformation of the debrite, as the turbidite or the turbidity current is flowing over the top of it, depositing its sandstone, the deformation in the debrite creating a rugose top within which uh, sand can accumulate and we can reduce the timing and the uh, from the sandstone that's on top and see the deformation in the debris that has created the rugosity at the top as it's deformed under the turbidity current and what's more the early part of that deformation has entrained some of the earlier uh, part of the turbidity current where it's really coarse grain and it looks like it's injected down into the deforming substrate, which is the debrite itself. So, uh, deformation of the seabed as the turbidity current has flowed over the top. This, so this is evidence for a creeping, slowly collapsing seabed. And we've seen how we can use some simple concepts in structural geology to understand these creeping processes. You can find out more about the San Leonardo Debrite and others like it in this paper.